connection. Today I am coming to you from the terrace of my ninth floor Manhattan apartment. I'm Billy and I'm the host of Show and Tell, your program about vintage knitwear. Now, part of my love of vintage comes from my being nostalgic. I love to reminisce about summers down the shore in Atlantic City, the beach my great grandparents also frequented. Saltwater taffy originated there in the 1880s, and you may have received one of these popular souvenirs, the James Barrel Bank, filled with a variety of flavors of this chewy treat. My recollections of Atlantic City include the sandy-haired, suntan man who walked up and down the beach dressed in whites, toting a huge icebox over his shoulder shouting fudgy wedgy creamsicle popsicle those colors of my childhood inspired my color choices for my next project Jimmy, which is the knit along starting on july 15th Today I wanted to share with you the unpacking of the yarns that I have ordered for the Jimmy Knit Along. So it's just one week delivery time. It, it always amazes me from the Color Mart people oops, over in the UK uh, to New York. So let's see, here we go. Using my mother's vintage scissors from the 1950s. I have ordered eight of the nine colors because I'm planning to use a color from a previous garment from the last knit along as my ninth color. with my combs right in the bag. Nothing ever twisted. It was really delightful. I'm loving the colors. So this is going to be my main color. And I have this lime green and a pale yellow couple different shades of purples and a hot pink and pistachio and lavender and one second I'm going to get my other color uh, yeah here's just a teeny little swatch of the ninth color Genie involves nine colors. One of them is the main color, and this is the one that I have chosen. Now, you've seen this yarn before when I did the green chevron cardigan. That was my first knit along. It's very fine. Um, just for comparison, here's a toothpick. In my cardigan, I was holding this weight triple. In this project, it's held single on a size one needle. So this is one color, sort of like a peachy pink. And then all of these other popsicle colors. I used a program called Stitch Fiddle to chart out the colors. 
So when I selected my nine colors, I threw them into a chart. I'm not going to divulge the actual chart. That wouldn't be fair to Susan Crawford. But I was toying with these colors. Then in order to match up her colors to my colors, I laid down the names of hers and used references that would relate back to her actual chart, putting my colors where her colors were. Then lastly, I set up my own little reference using the symbols and the colors off of the actual chart, laying my colors next to it. So when I refer to the chart and it says, orange or she's got an orange box I know that I'm going to use hot pink where it says B I have some other things I want to talk about before I show you my swatch and the cast on part of my sweater Before we leave the topic of our beloved summer treat ice cream, I wanted to introduce you to the number one ranked ice cream shop in New York. It's called Cafe Panna, and it's a mere three blocks from where I live. David Leibowitz, who was the former pastry chef at Alice Walter's Chez Panisse in Berkeley, California, which is supposedly one of the most famous restaurants in America, He's also the author of The Perfect Scoop. He raves about the place. And we locals know it as the place that is started by the daughter of the famous restaurateur, Danny Meyer, of Shake Shack fame. Now, you may know Shake Shack because with over 200 stores in the US, covering 32 states, plus shops in 14 different countries, including Gatwick Airport in the UK. He lives in my neighborhood. I see him on the street from time to time. He's just the nicest guy, perfect gentleman. For a corporate executive, he's really very humble, very charming man. And 35 years ago, long before Shake Shack, he started a restaurant in my neighborhood called the Union Square Cafe. Union Square Cafe won five James Beard Awards and ranked in first place on the Zagat survey of most popular restaurants an unprecedented nine times. The same Union Square Hospitality Group that he's a part of opened a string of other really well-known, excellent restaurants so he has all this experience, which no doubt he's able to lend to his daughter. Plus for his own restaurants, which were generally in this area, he would buy a lot of his fresh produce from the farmers at the local green market. Now I've shown you this green market when I did the woolly tour of New York of my neighborhood, because there's a shepherdess who sells her yarn there. I'll put a link so you can go back and take a look at that uh, video, which shows the market in action. But Hallie, the daughter, also is getting her fruits for some of her ices and things at the nearby market. So shopping local from farmers who are in New York State. If you invest in the stock market, you might be familiar with Jim Cramer. He has a TV show where he talks about how to decide whether to buy, sell, or hold a stock. And his general rule of thumb is if there are places in your neighborhood like a Panera or a Chipotle, or an Ann Taylor, or someplace that you're familiar with, he says it's good to buy things that you 
can see and know because you can keep your finger on the pulse. If you see a lot of people going in and out and purchasing, then it's a thriving business that you might want to invest in. So getting back to Shake Shack, the original Shake Shack is also not too far from where I live in Madison Square. It's really rare for the city to allow an independent purveyor to be selling something inside any of the public parks. But somehow Danny Meyer has the magic charm. He's gotten a couple of concessions in some of the parks. And the very first Shake Shack was there. I would see lines of people. Now in New York, you have millions of dining options. When people are lined up for something, it's generally a sign that this is something worth waiting for. So I thought to invest in Shake Shack when it was initially traded on the stock exchange. And because it's a New York based company, their annual meetings are in New York. So I went to the very first annual meeting and I had a chance to meet Danny Meyer and some of the other executives. And I just know that from seeing him in my neighborhood and knowing people who know him, what an upstanding citizen he is. So I was really happy when his daughter opened this place and she seems to be doing really well. People are lining up for her amazing ice cream. Okay, so back to my ice cream colored sweater. It's a Fair Isle project. I haven't done Fair Isle before. I've done stranded color work, but not Fair Isle. So I started swatching. Oh, it's a little hard with the sun coming, coming through. But first I did some ribbing. I wanted to see how that was going to look. And then I did this color combination. And then there's going to be this break. So I tried out a few of the lighter colors and then I tried some other combinations of the darker colors and another combination of the light and here at the very end, yet another combination. So I think I'm pretty happy with the palette that I've chosen and some of the combinations. I'm not too keen on these because I think there's too much hot pink. It's a little too flashy for something that should be a little more traditional. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. This is what I have knit so far. I'm still in the ribbing. I don't mind that it's so lightweight because I want it to be a summer uh, article. So normally you don't have the sun coming from behind, but here if I put something solid behind it you might get a better idea now the needles i have number one needles us1 in straight but this is knit in the round so that didn't help me and i had circular ones that were very tiny like big enough for a neckline so that wasn't going to work either i decided to order chow goose since that seems to be my preferred brand now, I have the complete set of Chalco interchangeables that have the small cables and what they call large, which are a step up from their small. A step down from small, they call mini cables. So that's a mini cable. Let me get that toothpick again and show you how very fine this is. I have these needles screwed on um, and I'd need the little key to unlock it, but I, I did want to show you how fine they were. Purchasing these separately was a little bit of a trick because I didn't want to buy the whole set of minis. I just needed the size ones. My set that I already owned went down to a size two and I really am not planning on knitting anything finer than this, so I didn't need zero or below but I had to purchase the needle separately from the cable from two different vendors 
And I was hoping that when I got everything together on one place and assembled it, that it was going to work. But of course, it works just fine. Such a quality product. I hear that there are fakes out there and you want to beware, but these seem to be the real deal. So if you are interested in joining in on the knit along, I'll put the information down in the show notes. And I hope to see you on July 15th. Take care. 